Ladies and gentlemen, I would uh, first like to begin by congratulating Mr. <coughs> Kharia Arish Singh, uh, Arish Sahani. He's a singh, all right, but uh, as the name of Sahani, his associates, Dr. Nishi's <coughs> daughter, and uh, Dr. Uma Mysurka, who has consistently <coughs> supported the cause of Hindus, fought for the glory of temples, <coughs> and been recently decorated in our home state, Karnataka, for our contribution to the Hindu cause. I know that dinner is awaiting. But I asked uh, Dr. Mansurka how long I can speak. She said, as long as you want. <laughs> but I, I will not uh, test your patience. And all the people who are waiting to serve dinner, I'll try to, in a nutshell, explain the theme of what I'm going to speak and the background in which I've chosen this topic, <coughs> that corruption is our main disease and Hindutva is our main cure. <laughs> the fact of the matter today is as, uh, as Stephen Knapp said just now, the influence of Hinduism is growing all over the world. The rich in America are accepting the Hindu tenets even if they don't formally become Hindus. Some have even become formally Hindus. Hollywood's richest actress Julia Roberts went to Haryana for a shooting and there she noticed that people, poor people, had little stress on their face. So she asked some people in the shooting and the, in the troop, and she was taken to a Swamiji and who explained to her that if you follow the principles of Gita that you have freedom of action but no right to the fruit of that action. As Krishna explained, he said, if you adopt that principle, you can never have stress. And that is the principle on which we can establish, re-establish the glory of Hinduism once again. Only 600, 700 years ago, we the world's richest country, accounting for nearly 30% of the world GDP. We are producing everything. We were the front runners in science. And people who came from abroad, like the Chinese travelers, Fasian, Yuan Chang, Yuan Chang, people who came from Portugal, people who came from the United States, like Mark Twain, they all noticed that the one outstanding quality of an Indian was that he was honest. And their honesty was so pervading that they didn't even lock their houses when they went outside. All that has transformed because of foreign aggression and we became weak and became one of the poorest countries in the world. Now the economic growth is growing, is increasing. We find that the ashrams of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Swami Dayanand Saraswati, Ram Dev, of course, Sai Baba, all are filled with foreigners who are very well to do, who should have no reason to be unhappy if money was the cure for everything. But they are coming to search for the way. Recently, a book by uh, Richard Goldberg, published in My Random House, it is, it, the book is titled American Veda. 
And he describes the fascination for the rational, logically minded American for Hindu philosophy and Hindu logic. So with this growth of Hinduism's appeal, <coughs> naturally the, those who are in competition with us, in conversions, they are adopting all kinds of new methods to put India down. And we have to recognize that. No more it is the old method of fighting wars. Now it's a different way. Now it's through the mind. We are told we are not one people. We are Aryans and Dravidians. A lot of Indians have swallowed this. But uh, the DNA does not show that. Research done at the University of Cambridge, the University of Houston, in Mysore, all show that Indians have the same DNA. We may have in the extremists of India, territorial extremists of India, some other influences, but the dominant DNA is the same. Skin color has got nothing to do with race. Skin color has got to do with pigmentation. Pigmentation has got to do with your exposure to the sun. Closer to the equator, your, the sun's direct are, are the sun's rays are direct. Michael Jackson proved it by removing the pigmentation in his skin and became a white man. But in terms of DNA, there's no difference. Some uh, a couple of years ago in Bombay, there was a politician by the name Raj Thakre who said that Maharashtra should be reserved for Marathis and these taxi drivers of Bombay, they are all UP Walas, they have come here, they don't, you know, they don't belong here. I decided to get a hair sample of uh, Raj Thakre and I got it through a friend of mine who is a friend of his. I sent it to a laboratory in Hyderabad. I also caught hold of one taxi driver and UP Wala and took his hair sample. And then the report came and said the DNA of both are the same. So I, I publicly announced that Raj Thakre has actually come from UP. Who is he to talk about the taxi driver? We are still not contradicted. If he challenges me, ask him to come on a public platform with me and in front of everybody give me a hair sample. <laughs> so this Aryan, Dravidian, linguistic difference, India is a heterogeneous country. All these are to divide us, weaken us. And then, if that's not enough, to make you defensive, so that you don't say that I'm a Hindu. See, I may be Hindu, but I do all my puja at home, but I'm secular. Now what does that mean? Hindu is secular. We are, when we were 100% Hindu in this country, in India, the Jews came to India, we built their synagogues, synagogues. And when Israel was formed, the first resolution passed in parliament is, thank you India, you're the only country which didn't discriminate against the Jews. Same thing with Parsis. They went helter skelter after the invasion of by the Muslims of Iran. And the only place they have survived is India. 